Hi smart people, my name is Karol and this is Ads Courses, a channel where I give you the best digital marketing spreads and web analytics tricks. Welcome to my third video of Google BigQuery for Marketers series. In the previous videos I showed you how to move in the BigQuery interface and how to create basic queries using simple SQL formulas. This video will continue our journey with BigQuery and you will learn how to join tables from different data sources and analyze it like a boss. I will also show you how to unnest record arrays, which is the most useful when you export data from sources like Google Analytics or Google Firebase. And finally, we will export our data to Google Data Studio to visualize it and analyze it there. If you find my videos helpful and interesting, consider to hit the subscribe button now. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so let's start with joining tables. If you will continue your journey with BigQuery and SQL, you will definitely have a situation where you need to combine data from different data sources, data that have something in common. It could be a data from Google Ads and Google Analytics or Google Analytics and your CRM. It doesn't really matter. You can do this simply with Google BigQuery using the join functions. And there are a lot of different join functions in BigQuery. For example, a left join, a inner join, a right join. In this example, I will show you how to use a left join. Okay, so we will work with the Google BigQuery public data set. And in this example, we will work with the Borrow International data set. Okay, so this is the data set that we're gonna work with, Census Borrow International. And you can see several different tables in this data set and we will work with the country names area and mid-year population okay so these are two different tables that have different data but there are some common columns fields that are the same in these two tables so let's just see the country names area as you can see this is a small table we have a country code a country name and a country area and in this mid-year population we have a country code, country name, year and mid-year population. So there are like two columns that are similar, the same, in these two tables. So this is a country code and a country name, right? Country code and country name. So we will actually combine these two tables and join them together. Because let's say we want to pull out the data of a year from one table, a country name, country population and a country area from another table. Okay, so let's start. Let's create our query. So let's just write select. Okay. Okay, so first of all, we will select our media population table. So this will be this, this table. Okay, so this is the table. And now we're gonna join it using the left join function. Okay, and now we're gonna select the second table. Okay, so this is the second table, the Borrow International Country Names Era. After that, you would want to give these tables a name, so called aliases, right? So it would be like a shorter name of this table. It could be actually anything you want, but I like to keep it simple. So in this example, this will be called M. It could easily be like the, you know, mid-year population, blah, blah, blah. but I would just call it M and this table, I would call it A. And you just write it just like that. Okay, so now we're gonna left join these two on. So that means on what field you want to join these two tables, the common field that they have. In this example, we have country code and country name. We will use country code, code, right? Okay, but now we need to use the aliases that we used. So it'd be like M, because we are selecting country code from this table, equals to A country code from the A table, from this table, okay? In this example, they both have the same names, so it's country code, but if they wouldn't, it still would be possible to join them together if the data would be the same, right? So let's say in this table, the data, the field wouldn't be named country code, it would be like country codes, right? That would be okay also, you know, not in this example because they are 
named the same, but you could easily do it like this. Okay, so now we need to actually select the columns that we want to pull out, and I will just copy it. I have this prepared. Okay. All right, so we want to, to summarize this. We will select a year from the M table, from this table. We called it M, so it's M dot year m dot country name and we will name it as country you can actually skip this part you can delete this we, we just want to call this name a country not a m country name so right now it will be like m mid-year population and we will call it as population and we will have a from the a table country area as area and we will select this from this table and we will left join it with this table on m country code equals a country code because these columns are the same in both tables and we could order it by let's say year and country and we can run it and here you can see the data that we pulled out and it's using the left join function to join on a country code from both tables so we've got our year a country a population and an area area is taken from this table right the country name areas and the population and country and year is taken from this table the mid-year population okay so we join data from two different tables so that's how you join data from different tables in BigQuery. These are just the basics and I showed you only the left join function. If you want to elaborate more on that, there are plenty of different resources to learn from and I advise that you actually do and practice yourself doing this. Okay, so another topic that I want to cover in this video is how to unnest record arrays. And I will show you now what I mean by that. And to do it, I will work with the sample Google Analytics data that is available in Google Cloud Platform. Okay, so this is the data set, the Google Analytics sample data, and this is the table, the GA sessions. So we want to query this table right now. Okay, so let's query this table. Okay, and if you go to the schema of this table, you will see the field names, and some of them are, you know, like weird, I would say. Like this total hits and traffic source, dot source, dot medium. You've got this dot, and this is like more grayed out. Right, and you have a lot of data like this actually. So let's say hits look like this. You got hits transactions, hits transactions, transaction ID, hits transaction, transaction revenue, transaction tax, etc. 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 And these are actually uh, this is a record, and these are the arrays, and they are nested. Simply they are nested. So if you would want to, you know, pull out the transaction ID data, you can't do it like this. You can't just write hits.transaction.transaction ID and pull it out because if you do, you will have an error. Cannot access field transaction of value with type array string because this data is nested. And to do to unnest it, you simply write a function to do it. Okay, so let's just clear this up a little bit. And I have this function actually already prepared. So I will just copy it and I will walk you through the query. Okay, so this is how it looks. Let's say I want to select hits is entrance, hits page path, hits page host name, right? I want to pull out this data from this BigQuery uh, GA sessions table. And as I said, let's just have it like this. I can't pull out a data like that just simply by writing it like this. I need to unnest it. And to unnest a record arise, you need to write a cross join unnest. And this is the record that you want to unnest. So if we would go here and see the schema once again, let's go to the hits. We've got our hits. This is a record. And these are the nested arrays of this record. So we want to unnest the hits record. And we will name it as hits. And this is a further part. I will talk about this later. So let's just get rid of this right now. And if you go and run this query, you will be able to pull out the data, right? So we've got our page path, we've got our host name. As you can see, there are no hits in here. You can actually pull out this data. You don't have to use this uh, cross join unnest function on a fields that are nested, but on the first level. So for example, let's go with the hits once again. If you have hits, hit number, hits time, you can pull this data without unnesting. You can do this. You can do it by simply writing it like it is. But there is a problem when you have this 
fields that have more than one dot. So it's hits dot page dot page title. You can't pull out a data like that uh, without unnesting. Okay. So for example, I can pull out a data hits its entrance without this cross join unnest function. But once you have more than one dot, you need to unnest your arrays. So let's just complete this query to make actually sense. Okay. So what we are doing here is we select the hits is entrance. So is the, the hit is an entrance of your website and hits page path. So it will be a page path and hits page hostname. Actually, we don't need this. It won't add any value in this query. So let's just keep it simple like this. So we select these two columns from this table. We use the cross join unnest for the hits record and we call it as hits and where hits is entrance equals true because we want to only see the landing pages from your Google Analytics data. And let's run this now. Okay, so these are the page paths of your landing pages, right? You could actually select more data in here if you like. This is just an example how to unnest record arrays when you want to pull out a nested data from, for example, Google Analytics data, where nested arrays are very common, or Firebase uh, data also. So this is how you do it. Okay, so the final part will be the Google Data Studio, how to visualize your data in Google Data Studio. So I will show you this right now. I will show you it on the previous query from the joining tables. Okay, so let's run this query again. And if you're not familiar with Google Data Studio, uh, you can simply watch my other video about Google Data Studio, how to create reports, how to create dashboards, how to visualize data with Google Data Studio. So I advise to watch this video if you want to learn more about Google Data Studio. So in this video, it will be just a quick run through the visualization process from uh, Google BigQuery. So we have our query, we have our data in here. So let's just explore data with Google Data Studio and we will be redirected to GDS platform Okay, this is how it looks. And you can simply add charts in here or tables to visualize your data. So let's just delete this table, the default table, and let's add a chart, for example, bar chart. Okay, and let's simply just select a population as dimension, sorry, a country as dimension, and a population as metric. Okay, so we can see that this is our. A chart. We've got countries here, population in here. You can style it up if you want to show data labels to see the actual numbers in here. And this is fully interactive. Okay. Let's add another. Let it be a table. Okay. So this will have the same data. It doesn't matter. This is just to show you how to visualize the data. Okay. You can save this. You can name it in here. You can change the name and you can save the report. Okay, and now we can create a new report and share it. Okay, so it will ask you to add a data to this report from BigQuery. So add to report. Okay. Now you need to change the data source actually because there is some errors in here. And you can modify it. modify the data. I don't know why I needed to actually do this again. It's some kind of a bug, I think. So you need to change the, the dimensions and the metrics again, but it doesn't matter. You can create reports from this data. If you want to learn more about Google Data Studio, watch my other videos about this topic. Okay, so after these three videos, you have a basic knowledge of how to use BigQuery to analyze big data. I hope they will inspire you to learn more and practice more. You will definitely stand out on the market with this knowledge. If you have any questions or want to share your ideas, you can do this in the comment section below. If you don't want to miss any of my other videos, simply subscribe. That's all for today. Bye.